So I've taken designs and enhanced them with small little changes and you can follow along in today's video and test yourself to see how many points you can get right out of 23. And this is to see if you fully know amateur between professional graphic design. It's really great being able to show how a design looks, but it's even more impressive if they can actually experience the design itself, as well as understand how it feels and how it behaves. Learn more about Framer later in today's video. So here is the first before and after design, the left being the before and the right are the changes that I've made. The first question I have for you is this. Circled here is a call to action button. And basically that's just where a designer wants the end user to click. But on my changes, what two main reasons can you give as to why it's better than the first example? So we're looking for two main reasons why the second option on the right is more effective than the design on the left, just specifically the call to action button. Okay, so first of all, two points to the first answer, and that is obviously the color. Having it in a bright pinky red makes it stand out compared to it being in black as before, and thus it's more visible and more clickable. So if you guess that right, give yourself two points. But what about the second answer? Now, if you notice the isometric design is very square and very straight edged, and that also the call to action and the original design is also a square shape, then you're on the right track. And so on the revised design, the call to action button is a circle, and this makes it stand out geometrically speaking from the rest of the design. And in standing out, we create some contrast, which again makes it more visible and more clickable. So for those two correct answers, you can have four points in total, or just two points if you have one correct. Do keep track of your scores as we move through today's video and see how many you get at the very end. So for the next two point answer in today's video, I want you to look at these areas circled in pink. Now I've made some changes to the typography, obviously, but what graphic design principle has been used in the new changes? Now, if you do watch my videos often, then this one should be pretty easy. So for two points, the answer is of course hierarchy, because we have some visual hierarchy going on in color and size in this new change design. Though thinking about it, some people might also say contrast or even emphasis was used. And so if you did guess these two instead of hierarchy, give yourself just one point. But yeah, I was looking for hierarchy for two points. Okay, so the next answer is worth three points. So really get your thinking caps on and try and figure this one out. So there is a specific connection with the isometric design, the illustration section with the call to action button. And it's something that ensures the viewer sees the call to action button. But can you work out what that might be? Looking at the isometric illustration and then the call to action button, what ensures you finally do end up noticing that button? So yeah, this one might be a bit tricky, but the answer I'm looking for is flow. And in this instance, notice how the direction of all the lines in the illustration lead to that button. Those angled 45 degree, whatever degree they are, lines do drag you in that direction. This is a subtle but a very effective method designers use and it does work well. But yeah, that one was worth three points if you got it correct. And that was the last question on this first design. So moving on, we have here a poster design and it's not looking that awesome at the moment. Now I'm going to make two changes to the design that are based around contrast and it's solely going to be on the typography and nothing else. So if you can work out what changes based on contrast I'm going to make, you can grab yourself four points total, each correct answer being worth two points. So have a quick think about contrast and this design. Okay, so the first change in terms of contrast is size. We can make the main heading larger and then the lower text smaller which is just simply contrast of size and it does look more visually appealing. So that's the first two point answer right there, but have you got in the second one? Well, I've taken a color from the poster's edge on the right and I've added it onto the 2021 to create some color contrast. And again, this just elevates that design visually speaking. So there was a quick four points in total before we move on to the next design. So on this design, I want you to focus on the orange section over on the far left. In this area, there are two key or two main problems that need fixing. 
Take a closer look at the design over there on the left and ask yourself, what could be done better? So yeah, the first answer for two points is that the design is just too busy. So if you said the design is too busy, too cluttered, or too much is going on, give yourself two points. The next answer, however, is for three points because I feel this is slightly more difficult to see. So the problem here is the design doesn't take advantage of proximity, which is a design principle. And if we look at the revised version on the right, we can see that proximity has been used because the elements that are linked together are just closer together in one group. And this just seems to work so much more visually speaking. To allow for the design to be less busy, I increased the size of the orange zone to make more room. And then I lowered the outline text shop graphic downward. Remember that negative space is your friend most of the time as a designer. So yeah, there's a total of five points on that one. Oh, and I also decided to make the promo graphic stand out a bit more with some white text. And that's nothing to do with the questions and answers. That was just me wanting to change it. So here we have a text heavy design. And again, we have two changes that you need to try and work out before I show you the results. Both changes are typographic in nature and one change is worth two points and the last change is worth three points. So taking a good look at this typography, what do you feel needs to be changed and worked on? So the two point answer change relates to the lower block of text at the bottom. The leading is simply just too tightly packed together and so we need to increase that to make it more legible. And if you got that right, that's two points right there. But what about the three point question? So take a look at this top block of text here. If you said the layout needs to be changed because we have the word trusted by itself on one line, then you're correct. This isn't suitable for a title and changing things up will just work better for the design. We could also have just had put your faith in a trusted all in one single line, but the fact is the original layout needed to be changed. So interactive prototyping is the best way to communicate your app or your website's idea. The sponsor of today's video, Framer, is a no-code, free-to-use tool making it easy for anyone to become a prototyper. You can insert pre-built interactive components in seconds, sliders that actually slide, and inputs that can be filled, as well as buttons that can actually be clicked. Or of course, you can create your own, complete with every state and variation you need. And that's all completely code free thanks to the new Smart Components release. Sign up to Framer today at framer.com forward slash Satori. And that link is going to be down in the description box below. And if you want to see more content, just click a video on screen. Until next time, design your future today. Peace.